Well, hello again, everybody. This is John Norris at Trading Perspectives. As always, we have our good friend, Sam Clement. Sam, say hello. Hey, John. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. And here we are. We're starting our, our second season. We've got a little bit of a new look, as you know. You've seen it. I think you like yep. it. Yep. Looks good. <laughs> yeah, I think it looks good. Uh, our producer, if you will, Sarah, came up with that, and I think it looks fantastic. And, you know, we're going to uh, be a little bit more topical or perhaps, um, you know, cover a wider array of topics uh, in this upcoming season, make sure that we're covering the spectrum of all things thought leadership and whatnot. Sam, your thoughts on that? I'm excited. It's going to be uh, fun to kind of, you know, start out looking back on, on the past year. It's a good year to, to look back on and a, a fun year to look back on our predictions. If so, um, mm -hmm. I'm excited for it. Yeah, and guys, what we're going to do here is, and Sam kind of uh, kind of gave you a little bit of a teaser, we're going to take a look back on really what some of our predictions were for the so-called new normal. As you remember, last year, we every, everyone used the term new normal way too much. It's almost as overused as social distancing, shelter in place. Uh, what were some other good ones? <laughs> you know, so, um, uh, but but what's so funny, un what's so funny to me, yeah, yeah. That's What's so funny to me about the new normal and, and the use of that term is I remember when we came up with it, it, it wasn't as overdone as it is now. We, we kind of talked about it and we were like, that's a good name. You know, we're talking about so much is going to be changing. We are going to be in a new normal. And I, I felt like it was somewhat original at the time. And then now it's just, <laughs> it's become it's such commonplace. Not not, it's yeah. ubiquitous and not terribly original. But even so, you know, last year and starting in May, you know, I think we I think we really were sort of the vanguard about that, going out and making some predictions. Uh, and we did a six or seven part series and then ended, getting, ended up getting it printed in a nice magazine format. So uh, we made a number of calls last year and we thought it'd be fun kind of fun to go back and take a look and you know nine ten months later whether or not any of our calls were correct and we're just going to start off with the first section of that series that we did last year and focusing on some um some of the predictions we had about society as a whole now we're not going to go through every single one of them but we've highlighted a few that we think most people have an opinion on and that's what we're going to do kind of go down them um, each bullet point each prediction and kind of see where we are in the process but before we get to the bullet points i'm just going to start out and read you what we wrote in terms of getting this whole new normal series started and here we here were here were our words starting off in may of last year what will the new normal be when we finally get past COVID 19 how will we live our lives and conduct business we get this inquiry several times a day if not more and wonder how have the events of the last several months and now sam the last year yeah changed us obviously everyone will answer that question and these questions a little bit differently. So without any further ado, Sam, the first prediction, here it is. Prior to COVID-19, it was unusual to see someone in public wearing a mask over their nose and mouth. Moving forward, more people will use some type of facial covering. This will be especially true when running errands, especially when you're going to the grocery. In fact, some, some establishments will require them. It won't be everyone, every store, or all the time. It'll just be enough to make face mask part of the new normal. Your thoughts? And it's so funny. It, it seems like this would have been something we predicted, you know, a couple of weeks ago. But mm -hmm. um, it, it's still kind of it's such a stronghold right now. And and I think a caveat is, especially in the United States, it, it's unusual to see someone in public wearing a mask or some other cultures where. You know, if you had a cold, that, that it was pretty common for you to wear some sort of face covering. But here in the U.S., before March of last year, or really probably April, I don't think I ever saw anyone wearing a mask outside of, you know, doctors <laughs> and if you, and if on you a did, TV you show. on the other side of the street, you know? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> something was wrong if you were wearing a mask. I think you were really sick. Well, Sam, I will tell you this. Uh, I think, you know, I mean, right now we still have mask mandates and whatnot across the United States. I would even, I, I would say, however, that um, once we do get to the new normal, once everything is behind us, people aren't going to wear masks all the time. And in certain, in rural areas, people aren't wearing masks now and they won't wear masks in the future. But I do think that perhaps facial coverings of some type will be a little bit more commonplace in the more densely populated areas. In some of our oh. bigger cities, I think it might not be the norm, but you know, everyone will have a supply of face masks and depending on the day and depending on their feeling, they might, might, might wear them. So it's not going to be 
quite the new normal to be wearing face masks, but it's going to be more common than what it was prior to COVID-19. And I think you're seeing that not only in, you know, individuals and anecdotally, but some of these companies that produce any sort of PPE, mm-hmm. you know, they're now being priced for continued expansion and growth and, and that this isn't as much of a short-term blip um, as we might have assumed previously, you know, oh, things get back to normal, people are going to be done wearing masks. Well, the market doesn't really seem to be thinking that right now. I mean, the multiples that are put on some of these companies, small companies before before 2020, they're not thinking that this is going, but they're going back to the same tiny company that they were beforehand. They think this is sticking at least somewhat. So, so I, I think we got that mostly right. Mostly right, and I feel pretty good about it. I would say so. Yeah, okay. I think that's. Uh, I think we kind of hit the nail on the head. You know, like awesome. you said, not going to not going to be everywhere, but and, um, and guys, uh, you know, before you think we just cherry picked our predictions to make it look like we got them all right, that's not going to be the case. Because here we go with the second prediction. It's the second one from the New Normal Society. Shaking hands will be the exception rather than the norm for the foreseeable future. Casual social hugging will also decline, with the exception of very close personal relationships. In essence people will significantly minimize their physical contact with new and or casual acquaintances. Over time, it is conceivable the Asian custom of bowing will become more commonplace in the remainder of the world. Sam, your thoughts? Uh, Definitely not as accurate as the first one. You know, I think people, especially here, it's been so, so ingrained in our culture that, you know, even early on in the pandemic, people would kind of, that, that was the, joke as you you know introduce yourself to someone it's like oh are we gonna shake hands are we not fist bump elbow but that, that's it's so ingrained that i think it's going to be hard for that to uh really become you know commonplace to not have any sort of shaking of hands yeah i think i think we might use fist bumps a little bit more but i think uh, once we get back to normal i think shaking hands will become the more commonplace especially for males uh, to greet one another, not occasionally, particularly if it's just kind of a casual meeting, I, I, a fist bump or something like that. So I do think it might really depend on the on the meeting itself, uh, and, and the, probably uh, geography as well. I'm sure in some that, areas, you know, down and down here um, in, in the south, you know, people this whole time for the most part, not everybody, but a, a good swath of people have just immediately stuck their hand out to shake their hand. And they yeah. say, Oh, if I have, if this is how I get it, I'm going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> they say a little bit more country than that, by the way, but yeah, no, but I do think that prediction, which I made by the way, about perhaps the Asian custom of bowing would be more commonplace. Uh, I think that's the way I, I don't think uh, that's going to become anywhere near the norm or the new normal in the United States anytime soon. I agree. All right. So mostly, uh, I don't know. We didn't we didn't nail that one, but um, you know, it is what it is. All right. Give it a, a, a C plus. <laughs> I I would give that sort of a E six. You know, we get on base, but uh, it's not because we uh, deserve to be. All right, <laughs> <laughs> the next one. Movie theater chains will face increased pressure as the production studios increasingly bypass the middleman by offering n- numerous subscription services. Customers will be able to pay monthly uh, by genre or by individual films. Netflix has basically already shown the industry how to do it. The COVID-19 pandemic will simply force the traditional studios to get with the program. Again, Sam, we we predicted this last month. I I think this is one of them so much last year during the pandemic, and I guess we're still in it, but we talked about trends that were already in place that were just being expedited. I mean, that was probably the single most common theme that we talked about for anything pandemic related. Yes, this was already happening, but it's going to happen at a much faster rate because of this. And, and part of that was just the coincidence of, of what a pandemic forces you to do and the way our society and our culture was already going. Those things kind of go hand in hand, um, less social interaction, more technology driven. That's been the case for 20 years. Um, and this this is no different. I mean, we're seeing you know, HBO has a service, Netflix has a service, Amazon has a service, uh, NBC, Peacock, uh, you know, Comcast, Fox, Showtime. I mean, there, there's 20 plus 
you know, sort of streaming services you, you can have. And, and, you know, at some point they're going to be bundled back up and that'll be basically a cable package like people have already paid for um, and nothing's going to change there. But th I think this is pretty spot on. I mean, people, TVs are getting bigger and TVs are also getting better and also getting cheaper. Um, and that is not a recipe for success for the movie theater industry. And so, well, I agree I mean, with you on that. And, you know, the Super Bowl was, uh, was just a few days ago and, um, you might have seen the, well, I don't think you watched much of the Super Bowl. I did, I didn't of, watch it. Which kind of takes us into the second. next question, by the way. But um, there were plenty of advertisements for, I think it was Paramount, it was something called Paramount Plus, where Paramount Studios production company is, you know, going to stream its own content to sub subscribers. Disney has announced this as well, really particularly over the last couple of quarters. So uh, I think we nailed this one. But again, it's, yeah. it's sort of sort of what you said, um, you know, just really kind of expediting the inevitable here and that's uh that's what COVID did because this was this was a trend already uh, it just how cable companies and some of those other ones have remained in business uh particularly with uh, streaming technology is anyone's best guess but I've, I've you know we don't we don't talk our book but we don't own a lot of cable companies so I mean, if, if you have a nice tv and, and it's becoming increasingly available to have a nice tv why why would i go pay 20 plus bucks 30 bucks you know and you get snacks and all that sometimes 40 50 bucks to go to a movie when i could sit on my more comfortable couch pause the movie when i want to and have a steak dinner while i'm watching the movie and and pay and pay probably yeah, 30 bucks. bucks for the month you know that's yeah. all right so i think we nailed this one all right we got to uh, move forward here's another one um, this is right after it. The sports industry will also undergo significant change. While passionate fans will continue to attend events, casual fan attendance will drop, particularly in enclosed arenas or stadiums. Depending on the team, city, and sport, some of these declines could be significant. Now, let me start off with this. I say um, uh, the jury's still out on enclosed arenas and stadiums. However, Sam, I mean, if you're watching the television ratings like I kind of do. Um, I think we nailed this one, uh, particularly some things like the NBA, just, you know, is it ever going to get back to its recent uh, you know, popularity of not too long ago? Uh, Major League Baseball, I think they had a couple of World Series games that were okay, but lowest ratings, uh, you know, ever, you know, on the television. And if I'm not mistaken, the NFL had some pretty future ratings this year as well. And I, I haven't watched an NHL game in years. I mean, and, and I can anecdotally add to this, and you're right with all that, and 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 you know, and probably most people know, I'm I'm a pretty big Auburn fan, especially Auburn basketball and Auburn football, and you know, I didn't get to go to any Auburn games this past year, and um, I mean, it, it's hard to hard to argue that it it didn't kind of hurt my fandom, you know, I I would just kind of watch the game and go, oh, okay, we won, turn it off, oh, we we lost, that sucks, turn it off, and really it just became kind of less of a big deal and, and and that that's my example because that's pretty much the team i cheer for the most and yeah and even my pro teams i like i'm a huge texas rangers fan as far as pro teams they're my favorite and i i didn't really watch a single game last year it just even if you're watching from home you know when there's no crowd in the stadium and there's no real noise there it's there's something about it and it makes it a little easier to say you know what it's fine. I'm probably not going to watch, especially when your team's not that good. I'll add that on top of it. So if your team sucks, <laughs> probably not going to watch too much of it either. So I would I would say that I, I I do think we might rebound from some of the awful ratings that we've seen as people have just have tuned out this year or the last couple months. But I I think this is a permanent trend. I don't think the sports industry is going to be quite as popular with the casual fan moving forward in the new normal as Absolutely. it was prior to COVID nineteen. We will Absolutely. And, and again, this is a trend that was probably already in place and it's just being expedited. Yeah. OK, this one is uh, you got to think about yourself. And uh, I want everyone to think about themselves and what they've done for food sustenance over the last 12 months. OK, here we are. Next next prediction we have after having to do so during the lockdowns, people will continue to cook more at home while eating out is convenient, tasty and fun. Families will likely have noticed a little bit of savings in their budget. From preparing their own meals. Interestingly, one of the unintentional though welcome outcomes of this crisis will be a slowing in the growth rates of obesity, diabetes, and other diet-related illnesses in the United States. Now, I got to tell you that last one there, that last part of that prediction, 
I think it's way too early to tell. And I think I might have gotten that wrong, wrong uh, and that was me, uh, because people were talking about, you remember the freshman 15 people talked about when you went to college, you started eating yeah. a lot of pizza and drinking a lot of beer. People were talking about the COVID-10, the COVID-15. COVID-20. <laughs> <laughs> well, I resemble that so much. Um, and that's really kind of due to more drinking alcohol, um, drinking more booze at the house. Uh, the numbers for some alcohol producers have been very good over the last 12 months. Um, and people just snack more, just uh, consume more food. However, I will say this. I do think people will probably cook more at, you know, at home, particularly some of these fancy food delivery services freshly, I think, I think, or you know, some of them. I can't remember all of them. It seems like there's a different one coming out all the time. And some of the meals that they're preparing yeah. and sending to the house on some dry ice look pretty daggone good uh, and they taste pretty good. And I got to tell you, from my experience, Beth, my wife and I, we're, we're cooking more creatively at the house. Part of that is we're now empty nesters and don't have to fix sloppy joes and uh, ragu spaghetti all the time, but <laughs> or tacos. But even so, we're being a little bit more picky with, with what we're eating and demanding fresher ingredients. And I do think that will probably be a trend in uh, American households moving forward, particularly for those families that can afford it. Your thoughts? No, absolutely. And I, I've kind of been the same way. You know, you're not going out to restaurants as much. You can spend a little more on, you know, some kind of fancy meal I want to cook at home. And, you know, a lot of times it's better. Yeah. It's all, it's usually a lot less money, even if you, you know, you're splurging on a couple steaks and, and what have you. I mean, all that said and done is still what, probably a quarter, half the price of, of if I was going to get a similar entree at a, at a nice restaurant. And, you know, I, I feel like I'm a decent cook and I usually like what I make better. So yeah. uh, it's hard to imagine that this trend for a lot of people isn't changing. And, and, you know, people are getting more into cooking and, you know, you're seeing some of these companies, it, it, it's flourishing. Yeah. So it, it, I agree. It's hard for this to uh, imagine this changing. Yeah, I, I, I will. I, I'll hold on to that prediction about diet related illnesses going down in the future. I do think that will still happen The more people eat at the house and eat healthier foods. I think that'll be a longer term trend. Right now, we're not seeing any evidence of that right now, at least from what I can tell. All yeah, right. That's a long term bet. That's a long term bet. Yeah. And uh, might be 10, 15, 20 years in the making, but uh, it, it's, it's out there. All right. And then kind of in keeping with food, people will be excited when their re favorite restaurants reopen, if they reopen. However, stuck in the middle restaurants and chains, those which don't compete effectively on either price or product will see probably a sharp drop in demand. Traditional so-called, quote, firm bars could be the hardest hit, particularly in markets where there are multiple, multiple arguably better options. We would argue this is a trend prior to COVID-19, but it should uh, significantly accelerate moving forward. Sam, I'll let you go first on this one. No, I think this is a short one. I think that's, I mean, it's easy. This is happening. It's already been happening. Um, you know, like you said, the ones that compete on price and service, they're doing fine for the most part. A lot of these other ones are not. Yeah, and I, 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 I'll adhere to this one. Uh, we're not going to sit there and say all of this stuck in the middle. Um, restaurants are going to close all their doors. But, uh, you know, you're seeing, seeing a number of empty sort of firm bar locations and sort of those stuck you know, kind of middle, midland chain restaurants are, are, are increasingly closing up doors, at least around in the Birmingham area, but I'm seeing that elsewhere as well. Just, just hard to compete when people are getting a little bit more used to cooking things like burgers at the house. You know, I made buffalo yeah, wings. I made, I made pretty good buffalo wings on the Super Bowl. Yeah, I made them at the house. I mean, just went to a discounter, got a whole big old 10-pound bag of the things and, and cooked a whole bunch of them at the house for a fraction of what it would cost to go to some place um, and, and buy them. Yeah, yep. So there you go. All right, moving onward and upward. All right. The fast food industry will redesign floor pans and adopt technology to ensure the next public health scare doesn't impact a business like this one. This bodes poorly for cashiers and other front of the house personnel as those jobs start to disappear from the economy. Fast food will truly become fast food. Uh, customers will order and pay by phone and pick up their meals uh, in an automatic, automat esque type manner. Overall, fast food chains will be leaner and meaner. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think we were already seeing this, and I think this is not necessarily due to cleanliness, but more due to minimum wage going up. And, you know, a lot of these jobs, it's no longer profitable for them to have four, five, six cashiers at the front 
when they can have a computer screen where someone taps and it always gets their order correct. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I, I think I think maybe the pandemic might have had a small part in this, but not an enormous one. But there, there certainly be some fast food type restaurants that sit there and go, well, shoot, I don't want the authorities to shut down my dining all the time. I'm going to make a more concerted effort to beef up my my takeout or e even, you know, um, the drive through or something. So, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so I would say really the, the minimum wage, the potential to increase that to $15 per hour, we're Washington is still debating that. That will kill more, um, <clears throat> that will kill more hourly jobs than, than anything else. Yeah, no, completely agree. All right, here's one. This next one, I think, uh, I think I really, I think I really nailed this one, Sam. And I'll let you go first after I read it. I think I really, really nailed it. As the economy struggles to recover and unemployment remains stubbornly elevated, political correctness will take a backseat for a while. Frankly, people will be more preoccupied with their own well-being and livelihoods as opposed to being worried about offending people. Sam, on a scale of one to 10, how, uh, how would you rate this prediction that I made? About like a negative two, negative three. <laughs> really, I'm really- Because it's not, just, it's not just it hasn't happened. We've actually probably moved in the opposite direction of yes. this prediction. So I think you could justify a negative rating on that one. Negative, I, I, I think you're being generous with negative two. That is one that we really, or I really, really got wrong. Maybe that was wishful thinking, rose-colored glasses, all that stuff, thinking that- somehow the pandemic would try to pull us all together as other catastrophes have to American society in the past. Um, you know, it's uh, after 9-11 and, you know, even in the first uh, Gulf Wars and, and what have you. So the culture and society in the United States really kind of came together and locked arms. We have seen quite the opposite here with COVID-19. So that prediction, while wishful thinking, is still wishful thinking. Fair enough. And, and I think in the age of social media, I think it's going to be hard to see a uh, trend like that change um, that drastically with, yeah. uh, you know, it takes two seconds to voice your opinion and, and it can be based off whatever you want it to be. And so it's, uh, for me, it's hard to imagine that changing. I agree with you. And Sam, the last prediction for today, and it's a long one, and you'll know it right, right as soon as I, I, um, as I read it that Sarah had a little bit of a hand in this one. So, ready? Over the, last yes. over the last several decades, U.S. society has become increasingly less formal, including corporate America. What was once considered business professional attire will officially become a thing of the past. After finding out during the COVID-19 pandemic that workers are just as productive in every, everyday casual attire, workout clothing, in some cases pajamas, employers will, take, uh, will relax the rules on appropriate office wear. As more businesses adapt to the remote work environment, we will move. Uh, we will more than likely see the end of business professional and business casual will evolve into casual Friday attire. Formal business suits will only be necessary for high-level meetings, funerals, and court appearances, and ties will increasingly become even more of a rarity. For women, flats will give high heels a run for their money, and jeans will be acceptable in many office environments during the week. The focus will be more on cleanliness and neatness as, a, as opposed to a predetermined style of clothing. Sam, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, at the beginning of this prediction, it says kind of the thing I keep hitting on and that this was already a trend that we're seeing and, and it's only getting expedited through all this because people are kind of realizing like, hey, maybe it doesn't matter as much if I wear a full suit every single day to work when I'm my clients aren't wearing a full suit when I meet with them. You know, that that should be kind of the barometer is what are your clients doing? And for people who are, say, just meeting on Zoom, just meeting over the phone or just not even talking with clients, you know, I think people are realizing that it's not as necessary to be in complete formal attire um, to show up to work. And, 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 you know, I think it kind of starts at the top of these companies. You know, people are going to try and dress like they're the, the people above them as they probably should. And the companies that are starting at the top are really seeing it change. And I agree with you. I think this is uh, the, uh, the pandemic really just kind of expedited the inevitable here with this one. And we will be more casual moving forward. There will still be occasion for a formal business suit or a tuxedo, uh, but uh, it's going to be increasingly less, less commonplace. Um, people will, will wear casual khakis um, to the office. Carhartts, maybe jeans, perhaps, but they'll pair these with um, 
you know, I mean, a, a quarter zip or a nice sweater or something like that. Sure. You know, a nice sure. golf shirt. As you know, I, I don't think we'll get to t-shirts and shorts and and a bank environment, but you could very easily see that in some other jobs. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's uh, going to be faster in some areas than others, but I think overall it's a trend we're all seeing. <laughs> Laughingly, I mean, our man Sam here is getting married in, a, in, in, not, in the not so distant future, and I'm already agonizing what I should wear to it because I, due to COVID-15, I'm not sure I can fit in my suits any longer. <laughs> So Sam, if I show up and I'm wearing a pair of Carhartts and a and a quarter zip, you'll, you'll, you'll know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure out something, even if I have to go buy some fat boy clothes somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, that's really all the predictions on society, uh, the society changes in the new normal that we we're going to present here today. I would highly encourage everyone to go out to Oak Worth's uh, website and go through the Fault Leadership tab and, and find our the entirety of the new normal series. Next week, we're going to uh, focus on some of the predictions that we made for the workforce and the one that, that prediction that we just made about the workforce attire we might touch on again. But, uh, you know, we hope we've, we've hope you've enjoyed this here today. And, you know, we hope that um, our predictions on the other areas in the new normal are maybe as accurate as what we did on society. Sam, your thoughts? Yeah, I think I think it's uh, it's you know healthy and fun and good to uh, look back on them. I'd give us a pretty decent grade on, you know, some of them are you know a little easier than others to predict. And but overall, I think we did probably a pretty good job. I think we did a pretty good job. I think we got full credit on a number of them, partial credit on, you know, most I got at least partial credit on all of them, but one. We got absolutely no credit. I think I think you made the one about the political correctness. I don't think that was me. I think that was you, right? It couldn't have been you. It could not have been you. <laughs> it's, it's not it's not review time. It was me. <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> so so with that, guys, thank y'all so much for listening. We always love to hear from you. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please drop us a line. You can always email email us at trading perspectives at oakworth.com or just leave us a review on the podcast out of your choice. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today and you're interested in hearing more, reading more by all means go to oakworth uh, oakworth.com and take a look and play around underneath the thought leadership tab there are all kinds of good articles and um, podcast information there. sam as always going to give you a last chance come on that's it that's all i got that's all i've got today too y'all take care <laughs>